Welcome back to a, another edition of Sims Complete. Mm. I am Matt Sims alongside Phil Sims, and we are going to break down the free agency frenzy that's been going on here in the wow. NFL world lately. A lot of interesting moves that have just taken place uh, really in the last 48 hours, and it's so great, too, because even prepping for this show leading up to it, we're saying, hey, let's talk about this quarterback. Where's he going to go? Let's talk about this card. Where's he going to oh, go? Geez. And, and uh, within 24 hours, all those guys get signed. They find new homes. And I think it's great, too, because now it kind of builds up even more excitement leading to this year's NFL draft and where this next batch of young quarterbacks will be headed. Uh, so we're, we're kind of getting a little inkling on some of these positions and where they may fall or which teams will be more focused on drafting a quarterback now. But we're going to start this news with Kirk Cousins. Don't know the dollar amount yet, but signs a what seems to be a four-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons. He reunites again with Raheem Morris, who is with him in Washington with Kyle Shanahan and big Mr. Shanahan himself. And now Zach Robinson, the former uh, Rams passing game coordinator, who's now right. the offensive coordinator here for the Atlanta Falcons, right. gets Kirk Cousins as his starting quarterback. Coming off injury, but nonetheless, one of, I think, one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the NFL your first initial reaction to the signing of Kirk Cousins, Big Phil. Okay, as I really paid attention to it, at first when I the offseason started, I went, what, Kirk Cousins to Atlanta? That's not going to happen. <laughs> then Raheem Morris gets tra- uh, signs there as a head coach. Zach Robinson, like you said, passing game coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams. So what do they do? They do the same thing that Kevin O'Connell does up in Minnesota. And, of course, he came from the Rams also. Right. But it's here's two plays. Call them both in the huddle. Pick out which one at the line of scrimmage. You know, I'm, it's a lot. And Kirk Cousins did that. And we know that Matt Stafford was always doing that with the Rams, right? Yeah. At the last second, always you know, panicking before the play clock goes down. And <laughs> Kirk Cousins handles that as well as anybody I've ever seen in the NFL. Correct. And, yes, he did finally get some credit this past year. Oh, he won a game in prime time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. It's a night game. Oh, my God, it's so big. I don't know if I can perform. I mean, another thing I hate the year. Yeah. Oh, what's his prime time record? I don't care. Shut up. You know, <laughs> you're playing better teams in prime time. But that, you, but, had a little, you had a little Austin Towers vibe right there. When yeah, you a little that. bit. That was pretty funny, yeah. But, but the thing is, he's tough. He can hang in the pocket. He can make all the throws. He's He is a aggressive thrower, too. Yeah. I mean, he throws a, a – the football a lot in the tight coverage. and But going down there, the offense with Zach Robinson. You know, Zach Robinson was a pretty good quarterback in college too. Yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma State guy. Yeah, he put up some decent numbers. I, I remember watching him. But I think it's a really good match. And I look at the Atlanta Falcons, if I had to guess or not guess, but say this, I think you have a better chance of winning just with that team than you do with the Minnesota Vikings and their team. It's really? not about the NFC South. I'm just talking about as a team. I like the Atlanta Falcons more than I do right now, the Minnesota Vikings, where a quarterback can go and gives him the best chance to win. Yeah, and, and it's great, too. I mean, just even for a thrower, right? He's yeah. going down there to uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. He's throwing in a dome again for essentially half the year, but even more so the year the the, the New, Orleans, uh, New Orleans Saints, excuse me, they're indoors. Tampa Bay, always beautiful to throw oh, in sunny grass. Florida. Oh. Yep. So don't even get Big Phil started on that. He's oh. so jealous of all those guys that yes. play down there in Florida and South Florida, right? But what I love about this is that now, you know, I hope as a fan, more importantly, I finally get to see, you know, who is Kyle Pitts? Who's Drake London? You know, what what else can we see up. from, from Bijan Robinson and, and Algier now with a quarterback like Kirk Cousins. That's where I get excited because this is a guy that, you know, again, like we say, he doesn't get enough of the credit that I think that he deserves, but he is an elevator of players that are around yes. him consistently because he's always making a good decision. He's always making tough throws. Nobody throws it better when they're being hit in the oh. NFL than Kirk Cousins, I would say, the past three or four years of their career. So, yeah, yeah. you know, that's where I get very excited because now I'm like, are, we're going to see – what Kyle Pitts, you know, in London really have to bring to the table with a player like him, because one of the attributes that I think is that the, one of the best things he does, right, and something that you did very well in your career, 
can throw the back shoulder or the 50-50 ball very aggressively to his target down the field over the middle and, and still be extremely accurate. You know, he's he's not afraid to throw it over the middle. No. You know, like we see some quarterbacks being a little careful at times, right? So that's where I get excited for this team being able to utilize the whole field, his ability to be aggressive in throwing those tight windows to go along with you know, the football IQ that he brings with his years of experience and now Zach Robinson being a first-year play caller. Well, just think of this way. You're getting Kirk Cousins and all of his special plays that he likes in Minnesota. Right. And they're going to be added to what Zach Robinson had yeah. in his passing, you know, yeah, great uh, point. Folder there. Great point. So yep. that's going to – because they're not going to get away from some of the great things that they were doing in Minnesota. When Zach Robinson sees them and hears Kirk Cousins – Here's how we did it and what this was about. He's going to go, man, yeah. that's some good stuff. Right. I mean, listen, when I watched Minnesota in the year and a half until Kirk Cousins got hurt where I really watched them, every week just about, Matt, I would go, damn, I don't think I've ever seen that play. Right. The Minnesota would run. And, yeah. dang, I keep hitting it. And it would pick up big yards. i just go, that everybody's got to copy that. Yeah. But you know what? I don't see teams copying Minnesota as much because it's aggressive. It's hold the ball. It's three and four guys deep down the field, and a lot of teams don't want to do that. But yeah. you brought up a great point, which I was going to do too. Drake London, okay, time to go. Kyle Pitts, let's be honest. They're in Atlanta. It didn't become a big story, but it's just been very disappointing right. the way he's played so far. Yeah, And I know it has something always to do with the offense, and I try to be fair that way. And the quarterback but, situation that they've been dealing with. Yeah, yeah. everything, but – I, I, I just didn't see it, and he wasn't what I expected, I guess. Okay. I expected to see a really multiple athlete where it just could fake you out and cut and all that. And okay. I, I thought it was just a little too – don't. I'm not going to say stiff, but just static. Let it go. Right. You, know, you know, all these good tight ends that we see in the league now, they all can shake and do their thing. They can run routes, and they're fast, and they can catch the hell out of the ball. And he, okay. needs, to, he needs to be one of those guys. Well, I, I think this is where having a guy like Kirk, it, it's going to help multiple levels of this team, right? I mean, right. Let, let's start from from basically the top down, right? For Arthur Blank, it, it gives him hope to think that Raheem Morris can come in here and kind of change the narrative of the organization very quickly now with a quarterback like Kirk to yeah. kind of take care of the offensive side of the football, essentially be that father figure on that side, right, to a very young offense, what it seems like. The other cool thing, too, you know, Raheem, second time head coach again. And, and I feel like, yeah, he understands the value of having that extension of the head coach, so to speak, you know, in, in that quarterback room, in that right. offensive room, you know, coaching everybody up to to his experience. And I think Dan Quinn did that a, a, a lot with Matt Ryan in Atlanta and Kyle Shanahan. He right. really leaned on Matt to say, like, you know, hey, man, I, I need you to be the driving force to get these young receivers on the same page as you, right? To kind of be that, you know, that disciplinarian sometimes on the offensive side of the football. And I think him and Kyle did a great job of finding that balance. And I think Kirk does a great job of that, too. You hear it all the time, and even, too, during the Super Bowl, you know, when he was doing interviews, just how often his teammates comment about how great of a leader he is, how yeah. how smart he is as far as a, as a as a person that can coach you through you know, on the field and off the field stuff, being an NFL football player. And I think that's very important for Raheem Morris in establishing, you know, this new hierarchy there in Atlanta, you know. And now, well, you're right, with Zach Robinson, I mean, being a first-time play call in the NFL, he's got to be, like, excited as hell, and it's got to be a little nerve-wracking too, oh, you know. But no, no, it's going to be good. It's going to, you know, it's going to be We good, got two you know? systems, and I got the quarterback who's not <laughs> – no, no. He, you know, Kirk's are not a. He's not worried but, about his but, stats. He's no, looking you're at right, the open guy. This is why I'm saying yeah. that too. Having someone like Kirk oh, will yeah. now give him the confidence to say, like, yeah, hey, this is how we can stack this play with this other concept as right. we get going, no and, and give him the ability to trust in himself too that way. So I think, uh, you know, the Kirk Cousins signing, I think, is really it's going to have a huge effect. I feel like on the whole team very quickly. Yeah, it'd be interesting. So, you know, so we got him, and it, this is going to be – it put to me, it puts Atlanta on the map. Yeah. It, you know, and it, it, the crowd, the people down there, the fans got to be excited. They're they're on the map. 
They got totally. a pretty good. I like a lot about their team. I like a lot of things. Now you get the quarterback. We got a different offense, and it's not going to be, hey, let's just try to win the game twenty to seventeen. It's yeah. going to be, let's go, let's play, and see and, what happens. And, and it's second time for Raheem being back in Atlanta. He right. understands just the, I think, the atmosphere, the culture of Atlanta Falcons football, and I think he's got a great you know, youthful energy to himself. Even though he's been coaching a very long time, yeah. he's got great energy, I feel like, that he'll understand how to get the most out of the Falcons uh, as soon as possible. So All right. re- well, let's, really let's, exciting there. Let's rip. Who do you want to go to next? Russell we got, Wilson? We got to go to Russell Wilson, man. All right, yeah, go ahead. Go. Let let it rip, player. What you think? Russell Wilson to the Steelers. Let it rip, player. I mean, that's how I usually <laughs> talk, you know. Yeah, no. uh, yeah, listen, not surprised. You used to talk like that one day, you know. Uh, well, once, yeah. yeah I, back listen, in the day. I saw something on NFL Network about two weeks ago. It was my rookie year, and I was calling signals, and it was hilarious. Blue for four. (laughs) It just, it was, (laughs) I literally sound like I came from Kentucky, which I did. Yeah. I couldn't get over my accent. Yeah. Yeah. You were country as hell. (laughs) Oh, you can still see it. Where are you from? Even here, I've been in Jersey how many years now? 40 going on 45 years, but well, <laughs> right. whatever. But Russell Wilson, it's a great match for both. Um, you know, I, I don't look at Arthur Smith being the new coordinator with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that's a plus. It'll be a little better in the passing game. Russell Wilson, we know how Pittsburgh wants to play. They're still going to be that same offense in a way, but they're hoping he can make more plays. He still has a good arm. He can get the ball down the field. He moves well enough. But Arthur Smith is going to be a little more aggressive, what he does, and it's just going to give the team, a you know, instead of let's don't turn it over and we're going to play defense. Well, that doesn't win championships right now. Yeah. You know, you got to be a little more than that. You got to have something dynamic about the offense. And uh, he's got the receivers. You know, their offensive line, I think, was a big story last year, how it stayed together for the whole year. And I thought they got better. A lot of youth. Um so I, I think it's a good play by Pittsburgh to bring him in. It's a one-year deal, and I think he has a chance to have good success there. Yeah, I do too. I, I like this move a lot. Uh, personally, I like it really just for the individual himself, right, and Russell Wilson. I think right. this is a guy like Mike Tomlin who I think he really enjoys uh, very much like a Rex Ryan did when he was with the Jets. He enjoys changing the narrative of how we view a player and and trying to show them that like, yeah, you know, Hey, you thought that this guy was, wasn't, didn't have it anymore. Well, he's going to come over here. He's doing a lot of big games for us and we're going to go to the playoffs. We're going to be successful. You know, I think he enjoys, you know, that battle, right. Uh, Of proving people wrong that way. And, and I think he's also a great leader though, too, that he will be able to, to have that, that discussion with Russell, right. On a personal and private level. You know, where it'd be like, hey, Russ, like, you know, it's, it's not what we do here in Pittsburgh, you know, but not in a way that he's demeaning him or belittling him like yeah. we saw Sean Payton do in Denver, you know, yeah. uh, especially publicly on the sidelines. So I don't think we're going to get that from Mike Tomlin to Russell Wilson. And I think that's important for Russell, you know, to be able to have that confidence in himself, knowing that he's not going to be essentially crushed and annihilated on the sideline for making yeah. a bad decision. So uh, I think that's really big. And also the Steelers, right? I mean, You know, maybe this gives Kenny Pickett the chance to kind of sit back, learn from a veteran, and and really kind of learn how it is to be a pro quarterback by being just a great backup again and and maybe giving him second life on his career and and seeing what happens with this Russell Wilson situation. But overall, the style of play, I think, matches big Mm -hmm. picture-wise for both parties. And I think both parties know kind of what they're dealing with. You know, Mike Tomlin, it seems like, Maybe it's not the end of the road, but it feels like we're getting close to the end of the road with him in Pittsburgh in a lot of ways. It felt like that last year. There was a lot of rumors circling, yeah. you know, what was going on with him. And same with Russell. Kind of getting to the end of the road uh, of his life expectancy and, and people's patience for him. So I think both sides really see a uh, a similarity between each other. Of we, we can help each other keep this, this road well, going. Yeah, listen, if Russell Wilson has a bad year, his career's over. Okay. Nobody's gonna go pick him up and say, "Oh, come and be our backup." I can't imagine because you right. know it's it, it's Russell Wilson went to the Super Bowl twice, won one time. Uh, he's a big name. He's a big presence, right. and you you don't want him sitting on your football team being a backup either. Because right. no matter what, the fans, oh, we need Russell, or 
whatever. But this is going to be this is this offense does fit him. Uh, it really does. Uh, it's not a lot of Arthur Smith wasn't like you know we're going to get up there and we got four plays and we got to pick the right one. They're going to call a play and run it. Yeah. Uh, so that makes it easy and uh, easy on Russell. And of course, Kenny Pickett. They say there's going to be a competition. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If Kenny Pickett starts, it'll be the biggest upset. You know, Russell Wilson will have to just be a disaster in right. practice and preseason not to be the starter. So, right. Uh, good fit for him. Good for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's close. They're a lot closer than everybody thinks. Okay. They had a ton of injuries last year. Yeah. The offense actually picked things up at the end of the year. So I think there's a lot of positives, and I look at them absolutely as a playoff football team. And as I'll kind of think about this a little more as the offseason goes, but they could be a big force in the AFC. Yeah, they definitely can be. And I think just the style of play matches Russell and his skill set, run the football, own the line of scrimmage, make good decisions in the passing game, play action, boots, nakeds, all that stuff that we've seen Arthur, Arthur Smith do consistently throughout his career, even with Tannehill there in the, right. in the Tennessee Titans. So I think wow. those things match. And then Russell Wilson's ability to just, you know, be a great, you know, goal ball thrower or deep ball thrower after, you know, you've won the line of scrimmage and you set up those right. those bomb type of throws. I think it fits him perfectly that way. So very, very exciting for the Steelers. And, uh, you know, again, just brings – brings a new level of optimism to, I think, a, a culture of a football team that's really kind of lost its way in the past two years. So yeah. uh, I, I think that's exciting. It's always good for the NFL when the Steelers are involved, you know, in a positive way to the game. Uh, now right. going, going to Baker Mayfield. There we him, go. And him signing with the Tampa Bay Bucks, And not only that, but Baker and Mike Evans returning uh, for next season, and well, uh, you were pretty pumped about Baker Mayfield signing back with the with the. Bucks. Well, I'd, I'd have been shocked if he didn't go back to Tampa Bay. I mean, yeah. you found a home, right? And you know they're going to treat you the right way. And of course, you got Mike Evans out there that that doesn't hurt the decision making. But I don't know if I've ever told you this story. So Pat Kerwin, who's on the NFL Network, is interviewing Todd Bowles every week, and he says to Todd Bowles. Can you explain Baker Mayfield to us? And he goes, yes. If I told him to stick his face into a fan, he would. And, <laughs> it just, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. And that says it all about Baker. Right. It really does. I mean, you and I were laughing. I, I don't know if we were on uh, on the air or not talking about Baker. I mean, it's, it's man, fire. He, he wants to throw that <laughs> damn ball hard. And I thought he threw the ball a good – it isn't Cleveland down there in Tampa. That weather's nice. That football's great. All those games you talked about in the NFC South where you get to play in good weather or in a dome. And he, I thought physically he threw the ball with power really well. But the other thing, he was a much better passer than I've seen him in the NFL by far this past year. Yeah, right. I mean, he could just, you know, he could throw it over top of people, in front of people. I thought he had much better touch on the football. And like I did, you and I were laughing earlier. I said, you know, but there were about three times in a game he just go, I, I just can't help it. I got to throw as hard as I can just to get <laughs> it out of my system. And But what a good year. He grew up. He was the leader of the team. Energy, personality, playing on the field. I mean, he, he gave them he, – they got it all right there. So yeah. – Good for Tampa. No, you're Bay. right. You're right. It, it's very exciting. And I think, too, just having his number one option in Mike Evans, right, because you can right. see that those two really worked well together. Mike Evans always spoke very glowingly about Baker, too, just saying, hey, man, all those haters, you know, you, you see what this kid can do. You know, he's he's really good. And, uh, and just his playmaking ability, you know, uh, I mean, that guy, he makes more chicken salad out of chicken doo-doo than a lot of players in the NFL. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, I think you, you're – you kind of underappreciate, even though he looks small on the field, dude's strong, dude's dense. You know, he he, he gets through a lot of arm tackles and, and does a lot of stuff with his feet. And his leadership, I think, to me is, you know, he even discussed this too in this offseason, especially during like Super Bowl interviews, just how he, yeah, you know, the Cleveland situation and, and even all that, like it kind of humbled him. And he said he found himself again a little bit like his confidence when he went out there in Los Angeles with Sean McVay. And it kind of just speaks to Sean McVay and how good of a leader yeah. he is. You know, he just said, hey, man, like, I, I don't want you to be Baker of Oklahoma or, you know, whatever. You, I, just just be Baker. Just go man, out there and play, great. man. I love it. You know, and yeah. I think it's like such a simple lesson, you know, for young QBs out there. Yeah. But 
you know, that's really all Baker really needed to hear again, yeah. right, to be reminded of. Like, you don't have to be anything other than just, you know, what, what you are, you know. And that's a tough football player, a player that can throw it. He's got a cannon. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's a, it's a great story, too, that he was able to, you know, kind of recapture what got him here. In who, the he first place. What, who he yeah, is. Who he is. Yeah, he exactly did it. You know, Matt, it, when he was coming out in the draft, Somebody basically, you know, that IQ and all that stuff, they said he has a photographic memory. Right. And I go, wow, really? You know, I don't know why you think of Baker. I'm, I'm not thinking like you're the smartest guy in the world, but apparently he's really, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? But apparently he's really smart and he right. picks things up quickly. He showed us that by moving around from Cleveland, goes to, you know, down to Carolina to the Rams, whatever, and what he did out there in such a short, short time. But, even though he's a much bigger person, you think when you meet him in person, right? I'm gonna say he's every bit close to six one, maybe, uh, maybe even a little bit more. I'm shrinking as time goes on, so I'm not a good judge sometimes <laughs> that way. But he has a high release throw in the football, so he plays tall. Yeah. And the other thing is, he's just a better athlete than we give him credit for. He moves in the pocket great. He buys time. He can throw when people are all over him, and he's not afraid to run. And I would say this about his running. You know, you don't have to wait till they hit you. Can you go down sometimes before they hit you? <laughs> yeah. Because he runs. He thinks he's a damn running back sometimes, right. hitting people. But, yeah, it's um, no-brainer for Tampa Bay. Good for Baker Mayfield. And um, we'll see where that goes. But a, a great signing by Tampa Bay. Yeah, it definitely is. And I'm glad for both parties. And, and this is another example, too, of what you had mentioned earlier this season. You know, Kirk Cousins, that offense with Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings right. match with Brian Flores. And then we're doing defensively. Same thing here with Todd Bowles and what they want to do defensively in Tampa Bay. Baker fits that. You know, yes. Baker has that ability to, you know, do nothing for three quarters, but then make the five or six throws in the fourth quarter to seal the deal. You know, and I think that's where. You know, this is a great match for, for both parties. Um, transitioning now. Yep. Big trade. Matt Jones traded to the Jaguars. Patriots finally, you know, move on from their first-round quarterback. Uh, new regime, you know, just kind of want to start over. Matt Jones getting a, another opportunity here in Jacksonville. What was your first initial reaction from this trade with the Jaguars and the Patriots? Well, I of course, I – was pretty sure it was coming. I just was waiting to see were they going to wait till the draft before yeah. they tried to make a trade. Uh, I thought did, maybe did you New know it was Jacksonville. No, I did no. not. Okay, I, right. I didn't even think about where he was. I thought he, you know, the first thing that came to my mind maybe San Francisco would come in, knowing right. he'd be a really good backup if they lose Sam Darnold or whatever. Yeah, but um, I, I think my thing about Mac Jones, look, he was a Pro Bowl quarterback as a rookie, deserved it. Played really well. They went to the playoffs. They got beat in Buffalo. He played well, even though the stats don't say it, but he played really well in the game. I thought, wow, I'm surprised Mac Jones is as good as he is. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I was thinking he could be good, but it was better than I thought it would be his rookie year for sure. Right. Then it fell apart, and I, this is my negative about Mac Jones. Okay, you, you've heard me say it many times. He does lack arm strength, so he has to be a great anticipator. But, you know, you can improve arm strength. And so in these previous years, I haven't seen – in fact, I think it looks like at times it's gotten weaker. Yeah. You know, you, you got to teach yourself. you got to know. And, you know, we talk about arm strength, and I, you don't have to have a cannon in the NFL, but you got to be able to get it to spots on time, and you can't anticipate everything so greatly. Uh, mm -hmm. So not not seeing that happen uh, was a disappointment to me, uh, you know, because I watch him and I kind of know what makes you throw the ball harder, and he was doing none of that. And I thought maybe with Bill O'Brien up there, this was going to change it a little. But, you know, after a few games, I went, no, nothing's changed. It's, it's you know, the offensive line wasn't great. They had slow receivers basically as a group. Yeah. And him not getting the football to them on time – when they were open every once in a while, it, it was a big problem, yeah. and uh, he needed to he needed another place to go to. Yeah, so yeah. he's got to get I, rehabilitated down in Jacksonville. <laughs> so if his time ever does come up again, he he'll be ready to you know make an impact. 
Yeah, and I think big picture too. This kind of shows, shows us and reminds us, right, that just sometimes, uh, you know, we're easy to judge the player, right? But I think in Mac Jones' situation and Daniel Jones' situation, the organization is just as responsible for their shortcomings as a player on the field, right? And right. and I think that really uh, hinders the player from from overcoming that in that same you know environment, right? right. You know, best thing for Daniel Jones is to move on from New York now because. New York fans, they're not going to hang in there a whole season watching him going through growing pains more as he, you know, reestablishes it. Same thing with New England. They're not going to sit there and wait and say, all right, yeah, you'll get him next week, Mac. They're like, nope, we'd rather just no, start over, you know. Yeah. So uh, this is where I think these organizations, you know, it, they, they got to really – you got to really be careful with young quarterbacks and, and how you surround them with talent, how you surround them with coaching talent, and it's not a game to be played or messed around with, you know. Right. So – uh, I'm happy for him to get a new start down there. You know, go down there with Doug Peterson. You know, an offensive focused guy who who seems yeah. to know how to communicate and work with quarterbacks and revitalizes Trevor Lawrence's career after the Urban Meyer debacle. So, you know, good for him to get the second shot. Yeah, uh, I'm happy for him. Yeah, go ahead. Now we're gonna go into after all of this quarterback movement. We're gonna finish with this. What the hell happens to Justin Fields now? Before you and I started talking, I literally got my sheet out and said, let me just go down the whole list. And I'm, I could not find a spot where I go, oh, that could be it. Mm. I, I just, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's going to be interesting. It, a couple things, teams know that Chicago is going to draft a quarterback. So why would you be, be willing to give up much of anything for Justin Fields? Right. This is not about his talent. What the, It's just the fact that the situation. The situation is Chicago is going to have – what are you going to do? You can't keep them both. Of course, a lot of people say, oh, you should keep them both. No, that would be an absolute disaster. Yeah, it would. You know, the fans, oh, we want this, we want that. You know, and then the, the media uh, would get involved even more, which they're very involved anyway down there. But, Matt, you tell me. I can't think of the team – where I look at it and go, this is where he would have a good chance to have success because it fits his play style. I don't know. So. Yeah, I, I think uh, the one thing that I have heard, right, Mike Lombardi, uh, who we who we know and respect in this field too, he had yeah. mentioned uh, just the Eagles going out and getting him, you know, uh, for a bargain deal and making him basically their backup or even having some sort of a system too where you can maybe have Jalen and Justin uh, on the field at the exact same time. I don't know if that's actually realistic. I like the thought initially. As I think about it, though, I mean, you know, there's no way that Jalen Hurts wants someone like Justin Fields as his backup, you know, because yeah. he's he's talented. So, uh, you know, I, I don't really know exactly what happens to Justin now. It is unfortunate. It, it, this is another situation, though, too, where, um, you know, the franchise kind of kind of put him in a tough position. I also don't think that he was – uh, as qualified as a quarterback or first round quarterback as people were, were pegging him to be there early, you know, in this process and eventually where he was drafted. Uh, but now, you know, he's kind of in a tough situation where we'll see who the best suitor is late here uh, for him. But hopefully he does get an opportunity to, you know, find some place that is interested in him and, and can help him, you know, kind of fix his career again. You know, we've seen it a few times. Geno Smith is a great example oh, sure. of this. Yeah. You know, so it's not that it's over. It's just it's going to be a lot of hard work to kind of get back to that quarterback one position and to keep it. So um, multiple stories that show that that you can do it, but you know this is now the track uh, for for Justin Fields and, and his future. Yeah, you said it right. I'll I'll make this quick. Mike Lombardi, I respect him great too. The great one, you know, Mike Lombardi. Oh, he imitates Al Davis. He's great at imitating. But it it that is Justin Fields. To Philadelphia, you go, oh, okay. That get then you go, no, that's not gonna work. Yeah. I mean, one, you just paid Jalen Hurts a lot of money, and you said it right. When you go watch Justin Fields in practice, the size, the running, the arm strength, he's not a great passer, but you talking about throwing line drives, he can throw a 40 yard line drive. And right. um, you know, as I look at it now, there's no starting job out there that I think he can go and get unless somebody like the Raiders, you know, do, what do they want to be on the offensive side? So I'm kind of interested to see where they go. 
Okay. And, you know, I started making, you and I, we were talking earlier. All of a sudden, you start putting these checks by teams. You know, I thought maybe these quarterbacks would slide. But there's so many moves now that are making me think, well, hell, they're going to have to take a quarterback. Right. You know, so, you know, even the Giants, we'll talk about them, not here, but what what are they going to do? Are they going to move in the draft? Are they going to get a player to help Daniel Jones? Are they going to look for, you know, the long range or a year later a replacement? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, there's just a lot of teams out there like that. Chicago, Washington, New England, Giants, Minnesota. What will they do? Yeah. Denver. Right. So, yeah, it's really interesting. We'll get into that next time we get on here. But, um, yeah, Justin Fields, I, I, I'm i surprised you. I thought you would have um, a team for me. I you don't. Know. I really, no. I, I don't. It's tough. It really is. It's tough for me to decide who, um, you know. And, I'm looking and, again. I still can't find it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe is it someone like the Cardinals? Uh, you know, would they be interested? I like your Raiders. I like that thought a lot. You know, just adding a, a talented player in that that you know, but it, it's limited. You know, it really is. I'm not really sure. And I don't. I also too, I'm not sure how many teams are really going to be patient with his development or excited about just you know what comes along with it. You know, it, well, it's almost like yeah. the Sanchez Tebow thing in New York. You know, with the Jets again. You know, you just you don't want to bring him in and then distract the media and the rest of the team from whoever your starter is and what you're actually really trying to do on your football team. You know, so I, I think that's where like the Eagle situation it, it initially sounds like a good idea, but it's not. What about, this will be my last little thought. What about Indy? Shane Steichen. Like that thought a lot. Had Justin, you know, he had uh, Jalen Hurts, what he did with him. Yeah. And, you know, Anthony Richardson there. Even Coming though Gardner, now. yeah, Gardner Minshew played really well, but you know, I just I looked down my list and I said, yeah, maybe Indy, maybe yeah. that would be the one team because Shane Steichen would know how to use him right away. Right, he's proven that big time what he did with Jalen Hurts two years ago. So yeah, I mean, as far as skill set goes, I feel like the other team that would be interesting and could fit him just because they've done this in the past too is the Baltimore Ravens. You know, as a team, right? Wow. That they get a, a player like him and. and you know, they appreciate a player like him as their backup, knowing that he's not going to throw it as well as Lamar, but he but he has Lamar qualities of as far as his athleticism Absolutely. and what they could do offensively. But again, I, I don't know, you know, is, is that more drama than necessary for a football team that it, right now is in like Super Bowl thought process, right? So is that even great, worth it to them? You know? It's a great idea. It really is. It's the insurance policy, policy big time for right. that football team. But it also it comes down to money, which it will. Of course, you know, of course, yeah. there's, there's money. What's amazing, you hear what's being offered uh, to Chicago about it's, it's just nobody offered anything. Yeah, you know, oh, six rounder things like it's. It might come to this where Chicago just got to give him give him away. Right. Uh, right. I don't know if yeah. there's going to be a suitor that's going to go out there and sell out. But you know what? We know this too in the NFL. Not to keep contradicting myself, but Everybody sits on a lot of these things, and then out of nowhere, boom, it happens. Yeah, you're right. You know you're what right. I mean? So, no doubt. Yeah. Honestly, it probably might have happened while we were doing the show right now, so you never know. But you never know. Uh, right. You know, it's – it's uh, well, that was a good breakdown for the free agency. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff happening. Uh, it's been an exciting few days, exciting, you know, last few hours, honestly. And, uh, you know, excited to see kind of where this offseason continues to go and obviously where the draft will take us – you know, for these young quarterbacks and the next generation oh. uh, for these franchises. So uh, that's all from us at Sims Complete. I'm Matt Sims with Phil Sims. We'll be back for more NFL breakdowns and analysis, the QB position specifically, but then also free agency talk. And then we'll eventually get to those Jets and Giants and talk yeah. a little bit more of that. All right. Yeah. So we'll see you next time for all of us at Sims Complete. See you later. Toodles. See ya.